Who thinks this is a toy? Actually, it's far away from that. It's the result of what we call learning through playing. Do you trust in learning through playing? Like children do? Like adults do? Like some scientists do as well? It's a fact. We are living in a complex world. Looking just around at our technical environment, it's already that complicated that no one is able to understand the whole complexity on its own. Talking about complexity, it sometimes feels as if we're already living in the future. In Industry 4.0, or else the so-called fourth industrial evolution, everything will be connected and developed in such a highly developed way that components with decentralized control and artificial intelligence working closely together in a cooperative behavior, like swarm behavior, for example. On this slide, you see our emotion spheres, uh, flying spheres, flying the precise, their choreographies, flying with swarm behavior, using 3D cameras for uh, as indoor GPS and complex control algorithms for control and communication. So on the first glance, the interfaces to us human become simpler, more intuitive, easier. Imagine in the future we will be able to control complex systems just by our thoughts. Or we will be able to get a force feedback from virtual reality with those kind of exoskeletons you see here. So on the second glance, the technology behind will become much more complicated. So to handle this complexity, we need highly educated specialists, we need interdisciplinary teams, limitless knowledge, engineering excellence. But the question is, how can one motivate those interdisciplinary teams consisting out of biologists, informaticians, designers, engineers, craftsmen and so on? How can we make sure that everyone has the same understanding, everyone has the same goal in mind? So, the answer, the answer lays around us. One answer lies around us in nature. At Festo, we're using bionic, which means biology and technology is coming together in one discipline. So bionic to search for solutions in nature, to generate knowledge, to get inspired from nature. So because we are sure that there are millions of solutions for yet unsolved technical problems on the one side, but also there are many, many fascinating principles worth doing research in, even if we don't have an application in mind already. So the kangaroo, for example, is a perfect role model for energy efficiency because it is able to reuse the energy of the landing phase, store it in its Achilles tendon and can take it uh, in, into the next jump. Or the elephant trunk, another very fascinating role model, uh, fits perfect in the field of industrial automation within this human-machine cooperation, human-machine interaction, because the structure itself is soft and flexible. So, searching for solutions in nature, uh, studying principles leads to new products on the one side, generates knowledge, collect experience, but also inspires us on a higher level, thinking more about concepts, about topics, thinking about adaptivity or swarm behavior, for example, can lead to completely new ideas, new, new projects. So the task for us is, to generate knowledge from biology, to learn from biology, and to develop innovative future concepts in the field of automation. The challenge, actually, is to find the principle behind, to find the technical abstraction. But the big advantage, actually, is that our projects never start just from a sketch. We always have this very impressive role model from the very beginning, which is so much better than we could achieve it, probably within the next decades. Nature has living materials, has growing materials. We have to deal with that matter, with industrial processing. So we know that we never will be able to copy nature, but we can learn from it and we can come as close as possible to the functions we are interested in. So having this strong image of a kangaroo in mind, it's very easy to come to a common understanding. Everybody knows how it looks like, how it jumps, how it behaves. 
So it's easy to motivate people to find various uh, people from various uh, sectors, various disciplines, specialists, bring them together, motivate them, and having the common dream of building a kangaroo or a dragonfly or a bird or an elephant trunk or whatever we did over the last 10 years within this so-called bionic learning network, actually, you already have the job half done. So the question is how to reach the other 50%. And therefore, we need labs, for sure. We need tools, we need processes, we need methods, we need time, we need money. But this is not as hard to get as what you really need, as far as I see. And what would this be? I think we need a playground. We need the freedom of looking beyond the horizon. This is what we really need and what is really hard to get these days. But we also have to be open. We need to have self-confidence. Imagine if we, come with, if we come with these kind of early state prototypes to the decision makers, asking for budget, asking for resources. You have to have the courage to fail. We need to be allowed to fail, actually. We have to take the risk and we have to be, have patience and a lot of frustration tolerance. And finally, we have to believe in the project. And here, all the above in action. This is what I uh, mean when I'm talking about learning through playing. So look for a big challenge and get started. Actually, we do this mainly with students with, any, with, with absolutely no budget in the very beginning, just to figure out, is it possible to reach the goal to build a kangaroo? We divide the big problem into basic problems using simulations, using many iterations uh, with our prototyping, just to get an idea how we can realize uh, this complex role model. We do it step by step and believe me, it never works at the first uh, moment. So always the question, how to reduce complexity? How can we make the, st the system stable just by changing mechanics, if possible? So, sometimes we're lucky, sometimes we're not. Always it's important, continue working, continue working, continue working, and then in the end, enjoy. I'll show you one more video of the development of those bionicopters that have you seen already. First of all, it was important to find the principle behind. Actually, what, which degrees of freedom do we need to fly like this dragonfly? So we found, we designed a construction, a gearbox actually, which with nine degrees of freedom in order to move the wings individually. You have to ask the right questions. If you don't know how to proceed, you have to ask the others and you have to accept help, like we did here with the helium balloon, because the weight was just too high at this moment. So then, very, very often, it just looks like this. It breaks many, many times, and always don't be frustrated. And in the end, if you know how to fail safe, how to save time for repairing, uh, use the time for testing, then again, be happy. And showing this video might give you an idea how close we can come to the natural role model. How much we can learn regarding aerodynamics, regarding lightweight design, regarding control engineering, finally regarding handling complexity. Imagine as a pilot you never would be able to control nine degrees of freedom at the same time. The pilot just gives the steering signals for orientation and direction and this is already difficult enough. The controller on board calculates the movement of each wing individually in order to control frequency, amplitude and direction of thrust. And doing this, it's able to hover in the air to fly almost as agile as the real dragonfly does. So what have we achieved so far? We found many various bio-inspired solutions for technical problems in order to make production lines more efficient, more human-friendly, more intuitive. One perfect example actually is this so-called fin ray structure, which was found at the tail fin of many fishes 
found by our network partners, Evologix. And this structure, this passively, which passively adapts, fits perfect uh, as a gripper for unregular shapes, especially in the food industry, for example, and is now they used many times. We learned a lot regarding lightweight design, regarding autonomous behavior, regarding flexible structures, adaptivity, and we found solution for non-hazardous human-machine cooperation due to this pneumatically lightweight-driven uh, kinematics. We found a lot of very interested people with a lot of competences, with dreams willing to work with us. Thanks a lot to all of all of those persons who participated over the last years. We have established the so-called Bionic Learning Network, a group of scientists where we work together to enhance our problem-solving competence, to find answers for technical solutions. And we hopefully could inspire many persons, many young people especially, inspire them for technology, fascinate them for technology. We hope that the engineers of the future also look into nature, searching for answers and be inspired uh, like we are. <laughs> so, when nature teaches, we learn through playing. And my wish for today, actually, is that more of us, maybe all of us, Go out, look into nature, seek inspiration from around us, be bold, be open, get easily started, take the risk and trust in learning through playing. Thanks a lot. <laughs>